Hey everyone, welcome back to another random video Thursday. Uh, today in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make a few mods to your WowTech A2S headlamp. Obviously, this is not in a headlamp holster right now, but this also is a right angle EDC light if you wish to use it for that. But there's a few modifications I made to this that I wanna talk about that can really improve this light because it's already a really great value. And for a few more dollars, you can modify it and make it even better. So the first mod here I'm gonna talk about is the top. You can see here, it doesn't look all that great. That's because this is a washer. Um, there, the problem I had with this carrying it as an EDC light in my pocket with uh, face up like this is that this button here sticks out from the top a little bit. There's no recess to it whatsoever. Now on a headlamp, that's perfectly fine. It's probably more desired that way. But in the pocket with this face up, with, uh, without this washer on here, this button was constantly getting bumped by things. And I would be looking down in my pocket and this light would be on full blast. Well, maybe not full blast, but maybe on medium or high. And it'd be on and I wouldn't notice it. And it's just sitting there wasting the battery, getting all hot. Uh, so what I did here is I just took this washer and I used some JB Weld epoxy and epoxy it to the top and it fits perfectly on here. Um, now this button you can see is recessed. I cannot turn this light on by hitting it. Before, if I were just to touch this button, it would turn the light on. Like I said, as a headlamp, that's, that's really desired for it to be easy to turn on with a, a button you can feel easily push. But if you want to make it more versatile and carry it in your pocket, you don't want to worry about, want to worry about bumping that switch. This is uh, almost necessary. Now I can still hold this here and click that button pretty easily. You know, your, your fingers are kind of rounded and they push into things. You know, this doesn't feel unnatural whatsoever. It still works. Now, as far as the size of the, uh, this washer goes, um, I'll save you a little time and try to figure that out. This is a 14 16 inch diameter and the inner hole is a half inch hole. Now, one thing I did do is that the inner edge of this hole on the other side of this washer, I kind of filed that out a little bit to form to the contour of the button because if I didn't, this would be sticking up just a hair and I didn't want that to be pushing on the button whatsoever. Now it wasn't a problem for me, I just, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to that stuff, so I made it a little bit easier. You don't have to do that, but that's what I did. I also painted it obviously, and the paint's already peeling off because it gets bumped a lot when it's in my pocket. I'm a technician and I use a flashlight every single day and it's part of my, uh, one of my main tools I use, it's very important. So on to the next mod. This isn't really necessarily a mod, but I bought a pocket clip and this is from an H2R, an Olay H2R headlamp. And I like this because it's a deep recess and if, it's, if you're gonna carry it in your pocket, you don't want the head sticking out too far because this is such a short light that this tends to wanna peel out of your pocket if it gets caught in something easily. So the deeper it is, the better, but not so deep to where you can't really grab it. Um, so there's not really a whole a lot more to say about that. I mean, it is reversible. The clip itself is reversible. You can mount it either way, in or out of your pocket, upside down, right side up. And then you can flip this over because this, all, this will also fit down here in this slot if you want to turn it over and carry it the other way. So that is kind of like mod number two. The lens now, one of the things that I did a review for about this light and one of my complaints was is that it has too much throw to it for a headlamp. Um, you know, I can see if you're using this headlamp as, uh, you know, if you're running or jogging or biking and you're moving fast and you need to see further ahead of you, that's fine. But for most people who use headlamps, they're not moving so fast where they need to see 150 feet in front of them, unless you're driving a car. So one thing I did to modify the lens here, and this is really, really simple, you get yourself a bottle of this stuff, or a spray can of this. This is frosted glass Rust-Oleum paint. And you spray this on uh, any glass surface and it will basically look frosted. So what you can see here, if I hold it up a little closer, you see right around the edge of that, um, I sprayed the whole lens. Now, if you're using this solely as a headlamp only and working in close proximity, I recommend just spraying the whole thing and leaving it completely sprayed. That will diffuse the light in 180 degrees out from this light and it won't have a hot spot. It'll just make everything glow and light up evenly. Now, if you're using this for an EDC light, you're carrying it on you and not using it as a headlamp all the time, but you still wanna use it as a headlamp, what you probably wanna do, kind of like what I did here, is the center of this lens, scrape away a little bit of that frosted paint that you put on there, just so you can see the diode in the center. And that will give you a little bit more projection and still get a broad beam to it. 
Now what I did is because I mainly carry this as an EDC and I don't really use as much as a headlamp, I scraped away almost to that edge right there. If you can see, there's only like maybe an eighth of an inch on that edge. So that gives me a little bit of projection uh, or, or a decent amount of projection and I still get a little bit of glow. So if I was to hold this up, you probably won't be able to see this too well on the table. No, you're not gonna see it too well because that's not the way the camera exposes it. But if you, in person, if you hold this up against a wall, you'll still see a spill going at about 180 degrees out from this light, maybe 175 degrees. So when you have this on your head, if you're going to use it on your head, you'll still get a little bit of better um, uh, spill and uh, uh, it'll cover more close range. If you don't have that ring on there, like I left here, you're gonna get a, a nice, a, a really tight beam, and it's not gonna work well for close proximity. I mean, it's not gonna light up things unless you're aiming it directly at something, and it just doesn't really work great for that. So you can play with it, spray paint that, and then scrape off in the center. If you need a little bit more projection, scrape off just a little bit more, and that's how you can do that. Now, the final mod to this is something that uh, I find it is it just makes this, it just completes everything. Now, the bottom of this here, you probably noticed this and you're probably asking what this is here. So what I did is I went to Home Depot. You can get these online too. I got these neodymium magnets. I think I pronounced that right. I, I always pronounce that wrong. But I got these magnets. These are three quarter inch rings. And it doesn't really matter that it has a hole in it. As a matter of fact, if you can find three quarter inch ones that are just flat discs without a hole, that's gonna be better because it's gonna give you the better holding force. Uh, these are just the ones that I picked up and I kind of wish that it was a full flat magnet after testing this out. It holds things very well. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute though. So these are the these are ring magnets and they are separated when they come in the package by, see a little black disc in the middle there? That's a piece of plastic that separates the magnets and you're going to use that for this mod too. Um, so these here are pretty strong. Uh, I don't really remember what the holding force is. It's probably on here somewhere. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but if you get a neodymium magnet it's, that's an eighth inch thick like this and a three quarter inch ring, it's gonna be more than enough holding force for a light like this. So I'm gonna be leaving links in the description for some of these parts here. If you want to purchase them, there'll probably be affiliate links too. Um, so anyways, what I did here is, I'm gonna throw up a couple pictures on the screen here so you can see what I did. So this copper piece you see here, it looks copper because it is copper. So what I did is I took a three quarter inch copper pipe I cut a little sliver off of that pipe and it's just a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker than the magnet. And that plastic ring that you see here that separates these magnets, I used that and I put it on top. So what I did is I took some of this JB Weld epoxy. This is the uh, fast setting stuff. And I've used this for a lot. This, this is a really great epoxy. So you take that, you file down the top of the light and you file down any contacting surface where you want it to, the epoxy to stick to just so you can rough it up a little bit. And then you'll take that and you'll stick it on there. Then you put it in there inside of that ring and you'll stick the magnet down in there as well. And you'll take that plastic ring that comes within that package and then stick it on top of that. Smear a little epoxy on there and then come back later, uh, sand it all down, uh, file everything down so it has nice smooth edges. And then what I did for this light is I didn't paint it black, although painting it black probably would have looked a little bit more uh, like it's original. I just put some clear lacquer on it. Not, well, not clear lacquer, clear enamel. And um, it just basically protects everything. It makes it shiny and it'll make the copper stay nice and uh, uh, copper looking without it oxidizing so much, although it probably will peel off. It'll mount sideways, no problem, but it's, it's to the point where if you were to bump it, it will fall off. That's why I say go with a full disc, not uh, a full disc magnet and not one with a hole in it. Um, so basically what I've done here is the functionality with the UI on this light and now with the size of it and the pocket clip and everything I've done, I've basically made it just like this light, the Olay H2R. Now, if you don't wanna go in through and do all this work to modify it, the H2R is gonna be basically the same thing, uh, except for the lumens this actually puts out is less than half of what it says on paper. I've measured the lumens uh, with the output of this light, the uh, WowTech e 2 s and it is not what they say it is. Now, it could be that my light is bad. It could be that the, the microchip in there isn't programmed properly. I'm not really sure. I don't buy a lot of uh, WowTech lights. Uh, they are a lower end light. They're still good quality light and great value, but the problem is that for this light, in mine in particular, I'm not speaking for all of them, the, the lumens that it puts out for low, medium, and high mode is not what they say they are. The 
turbo mode on the WowTech H2S is the same visibly as the high mode on the Olight H2R when I, when I compared them visibly. But as far as measuring them with uh, the meter uh, and putting it in a lumen tube, as I call it, uh, this here was not putting out what it was supposed to, what it says on paper. If you like all the mods to this light, you can get the WowTech H2R. It's, it's a discontinued model now. I'm not gonna do a, you know, a whole review here or comparison and no beam shots in this video, but this has a magnetic base on it. This has the clip on it. And this has a, even though it doesn't look like it, this is a recessed button. I can't, I can't turn that on by tapping and you have to push on the top here. It is slightly recessed under this rubber here and it has a TIR optic and that diffuses the light very nicely and still gives it some projection. Basically the same thing as I try to attempt doing here. So everything I've modded here, magnetic base and everything is already on this light, but you're really gonna pay for it. This is really expensive. Um, I'm not like a flashaholic or anything, but you know, when I want a decent tool, I'm gonna go out and buy a tool that I like. I'll still be using this light, it's just a secondary light. Um, I also need to mention here that uh, both of these lights do come with the, obviously the headband here. This is the WowTech, which has these little rubber rings that you have to push this light through. And the Olight H2R comes with this headband, which is basically magnetic. You just stick it on there and then you can put this rubber strap over there. Um, but what I really want to mention actually is the reason why I did it this way, the reason why I recessed this magnet inside this ring and put the epoxy around it and then put the plastic over top of this is because if you were to drop this light, neodymium magnets are very brittle and they break very easily. So carrying a light all the time, especially every day, you know, it's very, very often you will tend to drop a light. So if that lands on that, you could break that magnet very easily. So yeah, you could just take this magnet and epoxy it right on the bottom of the light. Um, probably give you a little bit better holding force too, but that's not gonna be very good when you drop it and break it and have to and do it all over again. So what I did is I just recessed it and that protects it. So if I was to drop it like this, especially with this plastic ring there, that's gonna hold everything together and protect it better. Okay, so far as the magnetic holding force of this that I made for the bottom of the WowTac A2S, there you go, it clips right to it. It holds on there, so it's got good holding force, but if I was to tap this, it's gonna fall off if it's completely sideways. Now, upside down, hanging it upside down, that's not going anywhere. That's got a lot of holding force like that. Same thing for the Wow, or the Olight H2R. It's about the same. It's maybe just a tiny bit stronger, but I can easily knock it off. Same thing there. So the holding force is about the same. That's why I say go with a, uh, a full disc magnet, not one with a hole in it, so it gives you a little bit more holding force. So, that's it for this video. Hope that was helpful. Um, please do not subscribe to my channel for this video. This is not a regular video that I post. This is just something I wanted to do on a random video Thursdays. I don't. I very. I don't very often post a video on Thursdays. Uh, especially, I don't very often post videos with stuff like this. So, if you do like this video, just give it a thumbs up. But don't subscribe for this because this is not my normal content. Thanks for watching.